all of you are civil engineers i guess yeah definitely you can post it in uh, chat but as we will be using powerpoint so it might i might have some delay in reading those queries uh we'll just wait a couple more minutes uh, guys one more thing this is live interaction session interactive session to be specific you already have gone through the lectures from two very highly reputed professors so i don't think there would be anything new i can add in the theory part so this will mo this will be more of a problem solving session and uh, how much you interact that will determine how much we can uh, elaborate on or uh, how varied this discussion can be otherwise just solving these handful of problems it won't take much time please feel free to join in because there will be some components that are totally dependent on how you respond so welcome everyone to the session Uh, the course topic is introduction to accounting and finance for civil engineers the instructors are professor sudhir mishra and professor kain jha i am vinugopal mahajan a pmr fellow at iit delhi uh, just give me a moment to turn off my camera so that we can conserve some bandwidth so the contents that were discussed in week 1 were the overview of the course introduction general discussion on construction projects time value of money and first part of economic decision making similarly for this session we will be covering some things related to construction equipments comparison of alternatives time value of money loan repayment and discounted payback period so the first question what are the important economic considerations for the selection of construction equipment and guys i want your answers i want to hear it this is a discussion session so it would be great if you answer anybody say so interest rates uh interest rates okay anything else useful life of equipment uh useful life of equipment okay and anything else initial cost initial cost maintenance cost maintenance Salary cost value. uh wait let me let me note down we have got initial cost then salvage value then useful life something else maintenance cost maintenance okay does this cover everything okay so for first point interest rates don't you think if you select any construction equipment if your financer is same the interest rate should remain the same i mean if you buy equipment a or equipment b but you want the loans from sbi only sbi will be charging you the same interest rate right yes sir so do, do you still think interest rate should come i mean these all points we are we have been using in numericals so i agree i just had one question about interest rates
anybody i mean should we still consider it or can we leave it okay so i would just add one more point here uh, the replacement cost obviously we talked about useful life after useful life and we still need that kind of operations done we also have to think of the replacement cost rest of all you quite agree so we'll move forward uh do you guys have pen and paper calculator with you because if you give me answer yes sir if you give me values we'll do it very fast next question is a concrete mixer cost rupees 75000 has a life of 5 years with salvage value at the end of its life of rupees 5000 determine its book value at the start of each year now my question to you guys is what is the book value what is the book value i mean we discussed uh, uh, these things now initial cost salvage cost so what is this book value you have been reading accounting and finance for last 3 weeks right anybody okay at least some wrong guesses so i guess so this is some the reason uh, uh the minus the salvage value cost cost minus the salvage value so that to for the that to for every year we have to calculate it okay and anything else i mean why why are we naming it book value if we are calling it something i mean difference of some values then why the term book value sir so book value means it is the cost of the company if that company is uh, uh value to be seen then the book value must be seen mm. okay so book value is something that for a company we note it down and it helps so uh right now we have got initial cost it's salvage value at the end of 5 years right so that means it must be reducing depreciation what is depreciation value of uh, money changes over time rate uh, today 100 rupees not not be uh, of the same value after 10 years or 5 years um, that is depreciation okay but that is the depreciation of rupee right i mean by your own definition what we are talking about is an equipment uh so sir uh, depreciation cost uh, uh, in terms of uh, machinery will be uh it has been working so depreciation machinery parts uh, uh movable parts are repairing tearing okay so it will not be new yeah so loss of value in machine with time right 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 sir right sir so this can be due to wear and tear this can be due to functional obsolescence and many more reasons so how yes, do we calculate it there are many methods okay for this question will be taking a straight line method a straight line depreciation it means that initially the cost is 75k after 5 years it reduces to 5000 so it it is reducing in a uniform manner so that means that for each year the depreciation value becomes 14000 right so by this calculation if it reduces by 14000 for the first year its book value at the end of first year becomes 61000 right or uh, am i missing something mm-hmm. 
guys you will have to respond so we can move on fast yes sir correct uh then okay thank you then what should be the value book value at the start of year 2 61000 right i mean these two values should correspond right yes okay 61000 minus 14000 again so you get some values if you go on continuing it you will get 5000 here right so have you have any of you guys tried it yes sir okay are you getting the same should we move on moving on to the next question uh, a firm buys a hot mix plant i guess you all are civil engineers so you know what hot mix plant is for rupees 30 lakhs with effective life of 15 years if for the first year the earnings of the firm is rupees 50 lakh calculate the taxable income use double declining balance of so the screen is not visible just declining balance method of depreciation you all know the formula for ddb right okay do you remember it or uh... okay in case of double declining balance method the depreciation is in the the factor depreciation is this 2 by n so in this case it would be 2 by 15 now the term here one term we have is ebi dta anybody Who would like to elaborate on the full form? Full form of EBI DTA? No, sir. Uh, okay, uh, it stands for earnings before interest. anything now d it is in front of you we have been discussing it that's why i paused okay interest depreciation taxes and amortization so here we have been given 50 lakhs as income as earnings so for 30 lakh rupees now you have to calculate the depreciation in first year in ddp method we don't need salvage value if you have done calculations you know why this gives the salvage value for uh, depreciation for first year as 4 lakh so the taxable income becomes 4 okay so this was just the calculation part of it that the firm has to pay tax on 46 lakh now my question to you guys is the firm earned 50 lakh this depreciation is not something that the firm paid in terms of money so why are we getting uh, tax benefits anybody I mean you understood my point right initially the firm earned rupees 50 lakh for first year but its asset price asset depreciated in value by 4 lakh so it has to pay taxes on income less uh, reducing it by 4 lakh but this 4 lakh didn't go in cash i mean the company didn't pay it right only the book value changed so why are we getting uh, some tax benefit So it's like government also wants you to uh, wants you to buy more equipments. So that's why once the equipment value depreciates, 
the equipment appreciates you will buy more and uh, as such you will promote the economy so for that benefit government wants government promotes this by allowing you to depreciate in your book okay moving on what are the most common methods for comparison of alternatives in present economy present economy anybody who would like to elaborate what is the present economy or what are the problems of present economy okay in conditions where we don't uh, account for time value of money we call those problems as problems of present economy so we have got three most common methods out of pocket commitment payback period and average annual rate of return uh, you guys have already solved the numericals on these methods so we will solve a few more uh first question on these methods for the staircase railings of your newly built home there are two alternatives costing rupees 36000 and rupees 45000 per floor respectively which one will you choose i want your answers obviously sir we will choose lesser one uh why uh that is the most uh, obvious choice uh obvious choice okay but in case of staircase railings it might be na that uh, the cheaper one won't look so good or uh, you might feel that uh, the expensive one will be uh, will will be more of visible value it can happen right so it can happen but uh, uh, when we uh, go through the uh, when we are not considering we we can't we can't consider those uh, those things in estimation aesthetic value and also yeah yeah that's correct absolutely correct in this case we are only worried about the economic cost economic considerations right sir right so in this case you can see that uh, it will be we will choose the 36000 option and uh, this can be directly linked to our first uh, method out of pocket commitment right i mean if you are the owner and you are you are paying so you would like to pay less anybody has any problem with this mm okay moving on following table gives the annual returns for an investment of rupees 10 lakh for two mutually exclusive ventures select the best alternative now first point i want from you guys is what kind of methods can we apply here i mean till now we read about three na discuss three payback period average annual rate of return and uh, out of pocket commitment so in this case it's not about out of pocket commitment because we are paying 10 lakh for both ventures brings us to two payback period and uh, average annual rate we will choose payback method for this matter and venture b will be most uh, uh, most profitable as we can see our investment of 10 lakh is uh, coming back in almost 3 years maybe for 3 years okay i mean somewhere here right 9 and 12 right and in right, this sir, case right. it is somewhere here 10 and 5 right, i mean sir. at the end of 4 years only right so if you had gone through this method average general rate you would have found out that okay the total is 15 lakh here 15 lakh both for both ventures for 5 years that gives you 3 lakh per year right so the average general rate would have been 30% for both cases do you follow me Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so in this case, AR would have given you the same values. In case of payback period, you can see that once you start 
adding it like here 3 till here 6 and here 10 from here 5 9 12 so somewhere around here uh, and by interpolation if you calculate it would be what uh, 2 years okay just 2 years 3 months right so this is the example of payback period method now we will uh, now this is a problem of uh, kind of the same sense as owning versus renting there is a city where uh, they have given the contract to an agency to pick up and dispose the garbage for rupees 30 lakh per year now there is a new elected body and they are planning that if can we do it in-house so that if we can save some money instead of that agency earning the profit we will earn it ourselves so they got an estimate that pickup vehicles will cost rupees 2 lakh per month wages for labor 1 lakh per month yard maintenance 1.5 lakh per month inspection cost 2 lakh per year and from all these whatever rubbish they are collecting and whatever manure they are producing from organic uh, they will sell it for 20 lakh per year so what should they do should they still uh, contract it outside or do this in-house so are you guys calculating this giving it a try yes sir Uh, okay, I also have one question for you guys. Uh, I mean, nobody of you asked uh, how I got the values of 2 lakh per month for the pickup vehicle, 1 lakh for wages. Why so? So that is the estimation, estimation part. Okay, but I mean... Maybe, uh, they, maybe, maybe some, some survey was done and uh, how man, uh, many uh, men hours or labor we are uh, employing mm. how much vehicle we need for collecting the garbage from the city how much manpower we need for all those things uh, yeah. that is the survey part okay so so you say that there was a survey done there was some right, person right. who went to the market mm -hmm. calculated all the values yes 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 sir yes sir okay so, you know, the beauty of this course is when you solve all these problems, you don't have to worry about what can be the possible alternatives or uh, where will you get that alternatives. You only learn, is, learn the main part is how to compare the alternatives. You don't worry about what other alternatives can be or how did we get the alternative. This thing you can uh, check in every question that you are facing. Okay, so have you guys solved it? So if we uh, do it uh, uh, ourselves by the company, that it would cost 36 per uh, lakh, uh, 36 lakh per year. And if we are giving it to some other contractor, that will cost 30 lakhs per year. So I think 30 lakhs per year is profitable. Uh, Okay, let's let's verify. Two lakh per month becomes twenty four per year. One lakh twelve. This becomes eighteen, right? This will be two, and this will be minus twenty. I mean, this is the cost that will be incurred by us, right? It's all right. Okay, so this becomes be thirty six. Thirty six, and uh, thirty six is greater than thirty lakh. So obviously we would prefer to do it in-house. Uh, see right now we are not worried about uh, how the contractor will make profit or uh, why we are losing this 6 lakh extra. We just compared it and the better alternative is that we will go for the renting itself. Now coming to the next question. Select the best alternative. There are two generators, initial investment given, annual cost, effective life, salvage value, everything is given to you. So the first thing, uh, can you guys make the cash flow diagram for this? Do you guys know what is a cash flow diagram? Yes, sir. Mm, okay. 
ओके व्हाट इज द पर्पस ऑफ ड्राइंग कैश फ्लो डायग्राम मनी आउट ऑफ पॉकेट मनी इन द पॉकेट सो दैट वी हैव द एस्टीमेशन पॉजिटिव साइड नेगेटिव साइड ओके आई मीन मनी आउट ऑफ पॉकेट मनी इन इन द पॉकेट दैट पार्ट कैन बी डन ऑन द टेबल आल्सो ना आई मीन अकाउंटिंग बुक्स दे आर इन एंड दे लुक लाइक बिग टेबल्स ओनली but then we have to take consideration of time also how many years the investment is uh, on hold or giving me return in what type period of time okay. the return is coming how, how much time time factor is also considered yeah so what happens with cash flow diagram is that it gives the better visualization so psychological advantage and also it gives the idea of time that kind of uh, gets missed when uh, we look at the tables only So let's draw the cash flow diagram. Hmm, just a minute. So incoming shall be up or uh, down this line, and outgoings. Incoming up, outflow is down. Okay, so this two is two leg is obviously outflow. annual cost is uh, again the outflow right is this correct for uh, generator a yes sir and for generator b right so how can we compare these two we can take lcm of the uh, common factor 2 and 3 and compare for 6 years then we can have an idea um okay anything else anybody else i mean we have got an excellent answer anybody i mean you must have already seen it in the videos that's why i'm asking okay so this case is of unequal life span right so in case of unequ unequal life span you can go by the by this method taking the lcm and comparing it or another thing you can do is if you, if they have already given the life or the project life like let's suppose that we only have to compare for uh, we only need the generator for 2 years so that means we don't need to extend it till 6 years right the lcm here we can compare it for initial 2 and get our answer but this is not the case this time so for uh, generator a we will need three such generators and uh, for generator b we will need two such generators so at the end of second year we will need to buy again then have the expenses the salvage value buy again expenses or did i make a mistake here so why initial investment we have drawn upward okay like investment and anything else the salvage value for 6 year we have forgot mm, okay yeah thank you for paying attention 
so here what happens is i started from this part wait a minute if someone i have to so two at the end of third year we'll have 200 here then 20 20 for the maintenance 200 right yeah okay uh, for this we will try to move a little fast uh, I uh, guys can you please uh, calculate the out of pocket com compare these by out of pocket commitment so we can have values Uh, this comes somewhere around, let me count. Uh, right? Or have I calculated it wrong? Okay. So from out of pocket commitment, we are getting this values. Which alternative will you select? A or B? B, alternative B. Uh, have I written, have I counted it correctly? No, I think uh, the first will be 660. Yeah. And second, I mean, we have second one is correct, sir. Second one is correct. Second one is correct, and first one is wrong. Okay, six sixty. Still, the answer remains same, right? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. So now one thing you can see here is that we didn't take a uh, time value of money in account, right? And now you also saw an example of how to compare when we have different lifespans. So the question is for you guys now. Time value of money. What is it? Why is it there? and uh, how do you take it into account and uh, i want answer from all of you guys so time of maybe we, uh, we consider value of money uh, after some time no uh, okay okay uh, uh, just i mean what part are you answering what why or how what is time value of money okay I am asking that part. Yeah. Time value money is the uh, value of money after some time, like two years, three years. What, how it will change? Like hundred rupees now, how much will what would uh, what would be its value after two years, three years? At what depreciation would uh, we are considering five percent, ten percent depreciation over the time? Okay. Um, why it is necessary? Because we no, want to know. Uh, not necessary. If why I... it happens? You said already. Like I mean, the depreciation, the depreciation of rupee. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anything Depreciation else? of rupee. Purchasing power, maybe. No, then not that. Uh, purchasing power, that's a quite different concept. Right, 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 right. So, yeah. Why time value of money? Anybody else? This is kind of an open question up for discussion. Inflation. Inflation. 
okay what happens in case of inflation is that today you can buy something for rupees 100 and uh, tomorrow the same thing cost you 110 so that is inflation this was also a doubt and discussion forum anybody else I mean time value of money we have been looking at it since what third fourth class when we started calculating simple interest compound interest simple interest right not compound interest that early like interest why do we pay interest I mean we borrowed some money from someone and if that person could have used it somewhere else and earned some money for that consideration we are paying him some interest right or is there any other definition for interest okay I guess uh, okay moving on to questions again uh, we have got a senior citizen who gets monthly pension and uh, also has a retirement fund of rupees 50 lakh and uh, that's in a FD that earns him 8.5% per annum. Now there is a new bank that comes up that pays 3% interest every four months. So if Mr. R moves his uh, retirement savings from this bank to the other bank, what will be the change in his yearly earnings? Everybody got the question, right? Yes, sir. So, what do you think? Will his uh, earnings increase or decrease? Just looking at the values. Definitely, it will increase. It will from eight point five to nine. Okay, five to eight point five to nine. Right, percentage. Uh, nine or more than nine. 4, 3, 12, 3, 3, 9. 9, sir. 9. Uh, okay, anybody who can challenge him that it should be more than 9 or less than 9? Overall, if the compound interest is taken into account, it will be more than 9. But uh, generally speaking, from uh, how much annually he, he is getting. That will be nine. Uh, okay, so in this case, when we when we have these kind of problems, we are usually talking about compounding, and obviously, if uh, Mr. R is getting, I mean, not that obvious, but if he is getting monthly pension, he doesn't need to worry about the interest that he is earning here. He can let it compound. So, uh, in that case, we we calculate I effective. So, in this case, it will be. Uh, can you help me calculate what is the formula for I effective? Right? So that will bring like 9.27 percent. So what will be his uh, increase in yearly earnings? Initially he was getting 8.5, now he is getting 9.27. So that brings us to 0.77 right and 0.77 into 50 lakh anybody 8.5 huh excellent sir 38.5 sir 38.5 
38.5 end unit i mean lakh thousand lakhs 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 uh okay how can 0.78 point, 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 okay 0.385 okay right you know by 100 yeah 0.385 0.385 lakh right okay so now you got the concept of i effective and uh, this problem in a uh, regular life also you must be seeing that many banks are coming up many credit cards are coming up that offer you different i's i mean different uh, periods or they will be offering thus uh, they will be showing you nominal and the effective would be different so use this wisely now coming to a loan repayment problem um mr a borrows rupees 10000 at i is equal to 10% to be repaid in 4 years the repayment amount includes 25% of the principal and the interest accrued find the repayment due each year so uh, can you guys calculate it does anybody have any problem in this uh, understanding this question Did you guys understand the problem? No. There is a person who yes, has who has borrowed ten thousand rupees, and he has to pay it back in four years. Each year, he will be paying some X Y Z amount. Now that amount must include twenty five percent of the principal, so that uh, in four years he is uniformly paying off the principal component. Now we have to calculate the interest component each year, and uh, find out the total repayment due for every year so for the first year at the end of first year uh, the principal is 10000 at interest 10% the interest amount becomes 1000 principal to be repaid 25% of the principal so 2500 so repayment due is 3500 at the end of second Uh, for second year from 10000 we have already paid off 2500 so 7500 is the remaining principal so interest component becomes 750 principal to be repaid is 2500 so that uh, so that br brings repayment due to 3250 similarly for next year and for the uh wait a minute yeah and similarly here no no principal remains so did you guys follow this calculation any confusion till here no sir okay uh, moving on uh, select the best alternative from the given pumps there are two pumps here with life span of 10 years salvage value of uh, their salvage value annual cost and initial investment is given and uh, i is also given so this is kind of a time value of money problem so how should we proceed how should we start we have got two pumps we have got all the details their life span is same we have been given a rate of return also or at some places it is called cost of capital in different case, sense i mean in the same sense so how should we proceed
ओके सो लेट्स फर्स्ट स्टार्ट बाय ड्राइंग द कैश फ्लो डायग्राम राइट डज द कैश फ्लो फॉर पंप है लुक लाइक दिस और है अगेन मेक मेड सम मिस्टेक ओके so in this case what we can do is we try to bring bring all this all these values to the present okay so we'll be solving this question by uh present worth method so in the case of initial investment it's already at uh, time t is equal to 0 so it will be the present worth for for annual cost we have to find p given a right so p given a i comma n where i and n both are 10 for salvage value we have to determine p given f i comma n let's determine these ratios from the interest table directly for 10 year see this is i is equal to 10 for 10 years we need this value 0.3855 and uh, p given a right so as the factors are same i'll just copy them so what should be the value here help me complete this table in terms of present worth people who are doing it uh, at the same time please tell me the values so one net 22900 for a okay then will cost uh, one 22900 and for b right yeah so this will this will be so 
so what is the present worth for both pumps will this be a positive value or negative value the salvage value the salvage will be positive yeah and rest of the things rest of the things will be negative, negative. Uh, okay uh so have you guys calculated right i mean we are getting these two present worth so what should we pick pump a or pump b a why so lowest negative values i mean lowest negative value don't you think the lowest negative value would be one where i mean numerical values higher okay we won't we won't delve in that i mean it's simply that uh, pump a is costing us less in the present terms right the difference is quite low so if i would have been i mean that difference is quite very low so yeah we'll be moving on with the uh, pump a now this is the ready reckoner we have been using you must have seen this in slides also right anybody has any question on this if you have we can discuss it okay coming to the next question but before that i am coming to you guys it has already been an hour so any doubts regarding the first week that you already studied have you you have already gone through any points that you would like to discuss yes sir yeah so so what about depreciation and salvage value uh, are they related to each other or uh, what is the relationship of them okay what is the relationship of them so we will take an example for this let's suppose you buy a table uh you buy a table for your masters program you buy the table for 1000 rupees and you want to use it only for 2 uh, years after that 2 years it is of no use to you because you are moving away so you plan to sell it to some other person he buys it for 300 rupees now the salvage this 300 rupees becomes for you the resale value salvage value or if the table has been broken and the parts are being sold then scrap value so it basically depends on at the end of useful life of that equipment what price that equipment can uh, ask for is it clear now i mean the salvage value part the same thing can be in terms of uh, equipments also like suppose you are using a concrete mixer and uh, you initially you were a small contractor so using a, uh, a small concrete mixer was okay for you but uh, as soon as you are you have started picking bigger projects now you have your own rmc plant that concrete mixer is of no use to you it is quite useful yet its useful life is not over but for you it's it is of no functional use so you want to sell it now it might sell for 25% of its cost so you can see that salvage value depends on many things but not on the depreciation of how how the asset depreciates now depreciation 
we talk that depreciation is the reduction we do in the book value so this brings us that okay this is something that is happening only in the books only on paper now when we talk about depreciation if you have been if you had the concrete mixer for 2 years you bought it for uh, 1 lakh and you are selling it for 25000 so in 2 years its value depreciated 75000 how do you book it how do you write it in your books account books it can be using different methods that there are like uh, some of your methods straight line depreciation double declining balance declining balance so i hope you get that there is no relation no relationship as such right so but at the end uh, uh, why we calculate the salvage value depends on depreciation see uh, that was one part uh, one question i raised in double declining balance method also like when when we have the formula for ddb we don't use salvage value i mean it's yeah. just it's just 2 uh, by n right yeah yeah in case of others like uh, sorry let's draw let's draw some diagrams for this okay any empty page yeah we'll try here only so this is your initial value this is your salvage value they don't have any relation depreciation actually gives you how fast you will fall from this value to this value it can be straight line it can be sum of years or it can be double declining right so these three are the ways or how fast the rates how fast you will reach your salvage value so salvage value is fixed if uh, with any depreciation method you use and in case of double declining balance if it happens that uh, you find some values which is less than the salvage value you don't write it in books you compensate it with any other method be it a straight line or uh, some of your method is it okay so so for as per the diagram uh, what you are saying that the uh, it's looking that the salvage value is dependent at the end of useful life yeah not in the initial life of the uh, equipment no is it correct yeah and uh, you can think of it in terms of this also like we gave the example of table uh, initially when you were planning and uh, that okay i am buying a table for 1000 rupees and 4 uh, years later i am selling it for 200 rupees at this point of time you don't actually know that you will be able to sell it for 200 rupees right yeah so this is kind of an estimate a guess it might happen that uh, you pass it on to your friend and you earn zero or some reseller buys it for 300 rupees so this is kind of an estimate that you use for your books it is basically for bookkeeping purposes here okay sir thank you okay okay mm. anybody else sir i have a question in week 0 okay Question number five, sir. I think the value I'm getting not mentioned uh, uh, in the options. Okay. Uh, so can you share the problem? Actually, uh, we won't be solving those problems because they are supposed okay, to sir. be your okay. exams. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. Yeah. So we it can was about. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Please go on. So I was just asking the uh, if the values uh, given in the options are correct or not. If we can uh, just check the that, uh, that only. No, no. For that you will get a notification. Okay, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anything? Any other question? So, what about time value of money? Like considering it for a small span or a long span. So, what about small span? What is the meaning of small time span here? Ah, uh, okay. 
so a small span large span when you make a house i mean your own home for how long do you for how long do you keep in your mind that okay i am building a home for th- these many years what is your thought process might be a year uh you are making your home only for a year i am not talking about the uh, construction project timeline i am talking about the whole cradle to grave period i mean how long are you planning to live in that house maybe sir 50 years 50 years maybe okay. yeah i mean yeah. two generations not bad yeah 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 so similarly when we talk about the small spans it is like when you have fixed values like 5 years 10 years this is small is relative because as soon as you go and talk about the lifespan of dams you will say oh i am designing this dam for 500 years right 100 years or 500 years or uh, if you are designing a um, power plant uh, power plant it might be 100 years so this is small span and large span are uh, relative values but in this case it might happen that uh, when you start compounding in some cases if you go beyond 30 35 years or even uh, you start reaching some constant value or very high values that's why we have a term called perpetuity like let's suppose uh, someone pays you 100 rupees per year for your ho- for your life span now how do you calculate the how do you estimate its present worth right now you don't know how long you are going to live but that number is quite big right i mean 70 80 years from now so in that case we have perpetuity uh does this clarify or in the same case you can see that if the if some person says that he will be giving you only for 10 years that becomes a small span for you okay sir uh no i mean i i okay can you ask it in some other manner so that uh, maybe there is some explanation that i am not uh able to bring in front right now i mean if you are unsatisfied you can definitely rephrase your question so actually uh, in the assignment the question is for small time span in yeah. which we are making decision so i i am wondering about what is uh, the meaning of small time span here that what i'm asking okay uh no you just you just think of it in terms of uh, time value of money only so be it a small be it big if you are uh, compounding it you have to take care of that so can you repeat it again uh just think of it in terms of compounding just that uh, just that point be it a small be it large just that you are compounding the interest or compounding the values okay okay yeah anybody else any other question no sir are you guys awake i mean other guys can i have a hands up just to check if you are listening or not okay yeah yeah thank you yeah it feels nice to have i mean live presence so moving back to the questions now this is the question we already solved it with one method right which method was that payback period right the same question present worth i think ah oh, oh sorry payback payback period where we got one answer is 2.33 and one is 4 years 
so now the question has changed how can anybody elaborate on this part so not time uh, interest rate has given so might be discounted payback period we have to use yeah discounted payback period so let's start by drawing the cash flow diagram uh this 10 lakh should go up or down down sir down okay 10 for 1 2 3 4 5 will increase right for venture and for venture b are these the correct cash flows for this yes sir okay thanks so now what is happening here is that discounted payback period with i is equal to 10% so that 1 lakh you are getting at the end of first year when you bring it to the present it's not 1 lakh right it's less than 1 lakh similarly all of these values once you start bringing it to the present the value will reduce by what factor will it reduce single point present worth factor right so what values do we have for n is equal to 1 to 5 and i is equal to 10% for n is equal to 1 to 5 and i is equal to 10% these are the values that i have already written in the table any confusion on this table i mean is it visible to all of you guys yeah mm, so please help me fill this i have not calculated these values so you will have to help me okay the first one is the same as it is 0.0909 yeah second is uh, uh, 1.652 okay third one one is 2.253 yeah is 2.52 and 3.105 and what's the total here
टेन पॉइंट फोर थ्री ओके so this table just shows that okay at the end we are getting more than 10 right i mean we invested 10 and we are getting 10.43 in 5 years even bringing it to present worth so our return is not i mean we are getting some return very small but yeah some return is there in second case what is the what is the value we are getting as sum Did you calculate it? Twelve point zero eight. Okay. So both these ventures give us value more than what we have in invested. But what is the discounted payback period? In this case, you can see that it is somewhere again here only after four years. Before five years, and in this case, four point five and in this case, it would be around here, right? Or after three years. So till here, the sum is ten point one zero two. so somewhere very close to year 3 this will be the payback period in case of uh venture b and uh, somewhere very close to year 5 it would be the payback period in case of venture a discounted periods so obviously we will be preferring venture b you can uh, calculate the exact values by again interpolation so we use these values any questions till now because now we will be going into one activity i mean the questions will be in uh, what you give me we have discussed the set contents set context now we learnt about time value of money so we will see the power of compounding in terms of mutual funds you have seen so many advertisements for mutual funds right i mean if you invested if you invest 1000 rupees for next 30 years you will be gaining in crores and crores so how does a small amount become such a big amount will be working on will be seeing seeing this with a uh, few numericals okay let me start uh let's suppose you are uh, you are currently 25 years old please don't take offense if you are younger or older this is just a value and uh, you start investing 10000 rupees per year for for next 10 10 years only and you want it to uh and you will take it out at the age of 50 right so 15 years you will be letting it compound and for 10 years you are investing it everybody clear with this term i mean what we are trying to do For ten years, yes, we will sir. we will invest ten thousand rupees per year, 
and we'll let it sit for uh, 15 years at at the age of 50 years we'll be taking it out so now what what will be your future worth that is the question so you have got a is equal to 10,000 n is equal to 10 years and uh, i is equal to 15 percent for that you get f is equal to uh, sorry we will just uh, see from the table for 10 years f given a right so f given a is 24.349 so that means this equates to this 10 years that you invested for this 10,000 you invested for 10 years so you invested 1 lakh it has become 24 lakh no 2.4 lakh right or 24 lakh what is happening 1 lakh to 2.43 lakh at the end of 10 years now for 15 years you are letting it sit how do we calculate this value this is the part where you have to answer we have got the value at the end of 25 plus 10 35 years and now we have to compound it so how will we get the value okay going back to the table now for this case your n is equal to 15 you already have the future worth at the end of 35 years right 35 years so for 50 years future worth n is equal to 15 i is also 15 so from table p given f because present i mean at the time of 50, 35 years it will become your present value right so for 15 it is 8.137 so at the end of 50 years it would be 2.4 into 8.13 how much does it equate to nineteen point seven six so as you can see that you initially deposited one lakh rupees and it has become nineteen point seven six lakh power of compounding right and you also learned how to calculate the future worth now let's change the question a little instead of starting at the age of uh, 25 you start at the age of 35 again you are investing 10,000 but you go on till the age of 50 years so that means for the period of 15 years i is equal to 15 so now what is the net worth? what is the future worth so from the table a given f forty seven point five eight right so this becomes ten thousand into forty seven point five eight four point seven five eight lakh and when 
how much you invested is 1.5 lakh can you guys see these values i mean anybody has any trouble in calculating these values okay so you saw that the first guy invested only for first 10 years and then he just let it compound while the second guy invested for a longer period so invested a lot larger amount of money and uh, yet the corpus the future cor the future value is less in first case investing 1 lakh he is getting 19.76 in second case investing 1.5 lakh getting 4.75 lakh now okay you might say that okay the values are quite different 10 year gap is very big let's reduce it that instead of 35 years he start at the age of 30 so n will be 20 years in this case it will be 102.44 so again that compounds to only 10 lakh right or more so you can see that having five year gap and uh, compounding it is showing quite different values so what is the point i mean we did an exercise three different guys investing at different times and we are getting different values and the guy who invested very low is having the highest future worth so what is the conclusion here anybody uh, did you guys follow the example yeah uh Okay how many of you didn't like the example Anybody any comment Or do you want me to proceed with some other values some other values that you give me But yeah, I have I have the tables only for i is equal to ten and i is equal to fifteen percent. So we will limit ourselves there. For and uh, at max n is equal to thirty. Rest of all, you can pick the values. Anybody who would like to give this a try? Okay, this was the this was. kind of supposed to be the last part so i am open to your questions your things that you would like to discuss yeah so what uh, so what is the relation between npv and irr mm, okay npv and irr what is npv net present worth and uh, what is irr internal rate of return so let's see this uh, with some diagrams okay yeah no just give me a moment to add some empty slides Uh, okay so we have got npv and we have got irr
so i have drawn a random cash flow can you guys follow it i mean it's for 5 years initial 2 years you are getting 20 and for next 3 you are getting 30 with investment of 100 so net present value is when you bring all these two time is equal to 0 bringing all these two time is equal to 0 you know the formula you have been given the future worth now what you need is i if you take different rate of interest you will get different present value right so in case of npv net present value you already have some i in your mind it might be um, the acceptable rate of return for you that okay i'll check it for 10% let's say if i is equal to 10% what is the npv right now if it is more than if it if it is more than 0 then definitely it is profitable for me if it is less than 0 at i is equal to 10% it is not profitable did you uh, follow this point or not no sir no sir okay hmm. so we should try something let's say i is equal to 10% you will start getting some values here right from 20 20 30 30 30 let's suppose the sum here is 120 and if you increase i is equal to 20% the sum reduces to 80 if you do the calculations you will find it that okay in one case it is high and in one case it is low so you can calculate npv directly if i has been given to you now there might be some i where the where all these values wait a minute uh, it remove there might be some i or there there is supposed to be some i where all these values all the future returns that you are getting will equate exactly to 100 which is your initial investment so at that time the npv of your investment would be 100 minus 100 is equal to 0 is it possible yeah yeah so when you find out that specific i it becomes your internal rate of return so relationship between i and npv irr and npv at uh, i is equal to irr your npv is equal to 0 for rate of return more than irr your npv will be negative and for i less than irr your npv will be greater than 0 i mean so i just can you explain the last two conditions with some example with greater some than 0 and less than 0 okay. okay so uh, we'll do one thing we'll take uh, real values because that will and instead of having such large cash flow we'll go with one value only so what is the i in this case at the end of first year you are getting 120 rupees if you are investing 100 right now at the end of first year you are getting 120 rupees so what is i right? 20% right i mean can you guys follow this point 
Yes, sir. Okay, I, I think I should start again. You invested hundred rupees. At the, at the end of first year, you are getting one twenty rupees back. So, from here you can see that, okay, I is equal to twenty percent, or. Let's suppose your I is equal to twenty percent, then. at the end of first year the present value the future worth of this 100 should be 100 into 1 plus 20% i mean i am just calculating the future worth right 120 right so you agree that okay i is 20% in this case similarly let's suppose that when you start calculating the present worth and you already have i is equal to 10% in the question or 10% in your mind or it is marr for you okay minimum attractive rate of return so from that if you calculate the present worth of 120 today what will it be from this table for 10 percent. One zero nine. Okay, so it is one zero nine. If you calculate the present worth in this case, net present value, it would be one zero nine minus hundred nine positive, right? Greater than zero. Because ten percent was less than twenty percent, you got it nine is nine. I mean positive NPV, NPV greater than zero. Now for in the same case, uh, I mean I don't have those tables. Uh, okay, so let's say your I is equal to thirty percent. So, one point three into one twenty is equal to what is this value? Ninety two. Ninety two. So your NPV becomes ninety two minus hundred minus eight. So you can see that if your I value increased. Your NPV decreased, right? Yeah. And uh, this I value increased in relation to your IRR. That was your internal rate of return, twenty percent. So I hope you got this from the values also. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, welcome. Anything else? No, sir. Um. Okay. So week one related doubts and week one related quest sample questions we have covered. Yeah, it happens that these assignments are. Kind of theory heavy also fifty percent of theory, so that makes that uh, you have to go through the theory, you have to keep many things in mind, and uh, you should do that because if you are going to write the exams, um, majority of the portion will be similar to what you are solving it in assignments, so do solve those assignments uh, honestly, and uh, please try to clear your doubts. and uh, if you have any doubt regarding this session or anything that is not clear to you you can also post it on the discussion forum i will be checking it so i will reply it there in detail anything you guys would like in the next session please let me know now sir for the next session if we could get some uh, questions in advance that we can uh, solve uh, 
actually I would be solving only sample problems so that should not be an issue okay sir yeah i mean i will be solving exam i will be solving yes, at sir. the yes, same sir. time as you na no? okay okay yeah uh, okay sir mm. and second thing sir during exam are we allowed to use calculator or the tables will be provided uh, what uh... Uh, no in uh, i mean if it is proctored and online based so you should be able to use the gate calculator and uh, in case okay. if the values are qu quite varied you will be provided with interest table in the question if not you know how to calculate it right 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 yeah okay sir so uh, maybe we should move on to end this session thank you very much thank you sir thank you so much sir welcome uh thank you for interacting so making it a lively session i'll see you next week thank you thank you sir